Hello and welcome back to Logan Sounds Off. Today on my podcast, I'm going to be reviewing Fontaine's DC's re- debut album, which is called Dog Roll, which first of all, I think is a really unique and strange name. And I actually picked up this um, particular record on vinyl in Tower Records. And uh, this was featured in my 2022 Roundup of the Year. Um, and it's a very, very... Um, cool album and along with that on that day I also bought um, Hero's Death and I Don't Belong which was the B-side um, single from their sophomore album which is called um, A Hero's Death and an incredible album that is and I've also got Thank You So Much to Gilded ALM. I have Skin T Fia which is their latest album on CD and I love this album as well. Both very different albums so I saw, thought I'd start off with the first which in my opinion is actually my favourite. And I remembered when my dad first put on Fontaine's DC in the car and I was really, it wasn't punk. It sounded different. It had a different vibe to it. More modern, I felt. Not in a bad way. I'm not saying that it's not punk music. Just it didn't feel like it at the time. It felt more indie rock based nearly. But there was definitely a punk influence there. And as well, hearing a Dublin accent, it was an inc- incredible to hear an Irish band like this. And they had just started. I think the first songs that I heard by them was Big and then Too Real. And then I'd say Sha Sha Sha. And uh, then afterwards on the John Creedon show, I would have heard uh, Liberty Bell and uh, Boys in the Better Land. And they are all on this album, and I believe some of them were singles as well. So I listened to those, and I was really just, I felt so invested in this new band. But they were very strange, but I quite liked them. So when Dog Roll came out, it was always on my to buy list. So at the end of 2022, I was delighted to pick up Dog Roll finally and be able to have it in vinyl format. So I've been listening to it a lot since I've got it and I sat down um, a couple of weeks ago and I decided in the new year on my first album review I'm going to review Dog Roll. So I'm going to start off with just some of the basic information if you don't know about Dog Roll was that it was released in 2019 so five years ago now by Partisan Records and um, Fontaine's DC also um, if you ever look at them on social media some people reference them as Fontaines. So if you like this band, make sure to check out their website, uh, Fontainesband.com. And uh, they are just an incredible group of people, as you'll hear. Starting off with Big, which is the first track on Side A of Dog Grow. And I have to say, I really love the guitar riff in this. And it's, it has this organic sound. So obviously this was... Um, this was recorded in a studio. This wasn't a garage album. This wasn't um this was a very beautifully presented and well produced track act- uh, album. This was very well produced. But this album was uh, recorded at Mr. Dan's studio in London. So I I I really thought, wow, how did they achieve that sound first of all in the first track? And um, the band is a really good dynamic. They, they work together. The instruments, especially in Sha Sha Sha, they're very nearly block. I, I, w- I would use the term block as in that it's very, it's nearly in segments, but very finely cut segments that there's a flow to it from some of the instruments but at the same time other instruments are keeping it in balance and I really thought that was interesting but um, in Sha 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 actually um, which is a great track this is the second track now has um, a really cool drum beat actually I love the drum beat in Sha 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 because it is um, the drum is so well recorded it's perfect and um, it's really simplistic there's no really complex stuff in the beginning and yet the other instruments I feel they they kind of the instruments are interdependent on each other 
but I think they're very dependent on the drum because the drum gives the song its real first of all it gives it its feel it gives it kind of nearly a groove and a sound and when I say a sound I mean when I hear that drum beat by hearing that not just because it's the first instrument played in the track if someone asks me what do you think this drum beat is from I will say Fontaine's Sha 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 so I think that's very interesting and then um, the next track then Too Real which is an iconic song for Doggrel um, and uh, just a really this was one of the first songs I heard and just it really kind of I didn't know much about punk music and I still don't know that much I'm still getting into a lot of different genres at the time of recording in January 2024 I love indie rock but now I'm starting to explore specific genres and early labels for example alternative tentacles which is best known for um Dead Kennedys were originally signed with alternative tentacles and the singer of Dead Kennedys and um, Jello Biafra actually started alternative tentacles so I've started been going on into all of these sub genres but this was nearly the start of um, my interest in Irish punk. So this is a very important album to me. And uh, please let me know what you think of Dog Will actually in the comments. Or also make sure to let me know on Spotify for podcasters on the RSS feed. And let me know on social media. So uh, I love the guitar plucks in Too Real. So... The first thing that I will say about Too Real is um, there is a Dublin accent there and it's really cool. I mean, I, I don't... Because a lot of singers, when they sing, they lose their accent and I think they lose a tone there. But what's achieved in uh, Fontaine's music is just pure authenticity. So that's why I love hearing the accent. And the hi-hats are brilliant as well. And the way they're in sync, it's it's a very colourful start. Um, the start of the song is very interesting. So I love To Real. And then after that, you've got television screens. And I really like this song because it has a great feel to it. Um, and also, I just have to say, the guitarist in um, Fontaine's DC... It's such a unique, it, there's such a unique tone there. Now, I'm actually not sure who played the guitar on this because there's Carlos O'Connell and also Connor Curley. So I'm not sure who played the guitar in that particular song. But it's uh, the guitarist, the main guitarist in general, because there is such an, there's such a strange uh, guitar kind of the way they play the guitar so I love that and then you have Hurricane Laughter this is the first song that nearly it's the thing is with Fontaine ZC I would listen to that nearly um, and I would kind of just listen and just surround myself with that kind of music but this was the first one that actually made an impact and I'm not trying to say that sounding offensive or pretentious I'm saying this song actually really made an impact. Not because the lyrics or anything. The actual music. And as well, Big made an impact on me because it was the first time I heard Fontaine's ZC and it was new. So that's totally different. This was a totally new thing for me. And to be honest, I hadn't heard that particular song in its entirety because I used to listen to... Um, different songs on the album until I sat down about a month ago and listened to the full album. Before that though I listened to Skinty Fia so I listened to a lot and a Hero's Death or a good bit of a Hero's Death anyways. So I knew Fontaine's EC or I thought I knew them but then they come out with Hurricane Laughter so that made me kind of think about it um, in a whole different way. So now I'm going to actually, that that was just an incredible track and then um, it's very eerie and it's nearly cinematic as well. And I use the term cinematic not as in uh, the video because I haven't seen any Fontaine's DC video. I am not a massive music video person. I imagine my own music video in my head. And I don't do that on purpose. It just happens. And it's not something that I go or I'm just 
saying that I do it particularly. It's just I don't watch many music videos because there aren't really music ch channels um, that would be kind of my near, my nearly favourite genres out there anymore. Um, apart from uh, maybe some, but just, you know. But um, the distorted guitar is excellent in Hurricane Laughter, so I really like that. But this is the thing. Hurricane Laughter moves on to a beautiful track then called Roy's Tune. But this song sends out a cool message. Not eerie, not creepy, not cinematic, not different, not unique, not impactful. It just says we're done for now. Then you move on to side B. So just one thing that I'm going to say before I start divulging into side B is that it's only five tracks, whether the last side was six. So um, the first actually I got on my record, which I like to think is a quirk of the record and not a massive problem. Big, I think it might have been that it was made wrong because Big, when I first got it, it skipped like five times. The song's only like a minute and a half. Whether the actual song is like three minutes. So half of it's chopped out. And it wasn't me because I'm very delicate with my records. So I don't know what happened there. So that might have been why the last side felt like kind of shorter or more tracks. Um, but this album was a lot longer and stretched. And much more... Um, there was a lot more meaning I felt. And I, I don't say that as in that the first side was bad i think the first side was great music the second side was more kind of good music but also food for thought so i thought that was really cool and the lots was the first track on this side and i thought that the ride symbols were actually very strange and um i will say because you have a ride but it cut off i am not a big fan of that where it goes and then it just stops. That irritates me. I don't know why. But something about the symbol just not finishing what it's meant to do. It drove me nuts throughout the song. Um, but I don't know what it is. It just, I didn't really like the song as much. But um, apart from that, the song's really good. Just the ride I didn't like. But apart from that, it's a really good song. I don't want to focus on the negative. Because this album is actually incredible. It is... I, I can't really say it's not as good as Skin to Fear, because in fairness, I've played this a lot, so it might be just getting bored t to me nearly, so that could be a bit of that there, and I don't unfairly judge this album, so I'll let you know what I think at the end. Um, But then you got Checklist Reckless, and this song nearly feels like something is in jeopardy, and I use the word jeopardy because it's not like something's in panic. Because, first of all, that's grammatically incorrect. It just feels like there's something off. It was an unsettling track. So this was slightly like Hurricane Laughter. It's a bit unsettling. A bit creepy. A bit eerie. A bit strange. A bit nearly... More... I would actually say nearly supernatural. It felt like there was something there that wasn't kind of part of the album i felt something there and i'm not saying obviously that the music that has ghosts or something i'm just saying it felt like in the particular song it was talking about an experience that was not quite normal so i thought that was really cool and i think i could investigate further but i i'm just sticking to the music now so um, it felt kind of like there was panic. So then next up was Liberty Bell. And this is actually one of my favourite tracks. Um, which is... This song is a really cool riff. But um, I just... This was an incredible song. And it meant a lot to me. So I love to hear this um, again. And then you had Boys in the Better Land. Which is a great track. And I love the riff and the drum beat. But I just want to speak about Dublin City Sky. Because this nearly had a Pogues feel to it. And uh, the Pogues are an incredible band. I love the Pogues. And I was very ha sad to hear um, the passing of Sh about the passing of Shane McGowan. But um, Dublin City Sky was a great finish for this album. So what do I think of it? I'm going to rate this album 
strong five stars for a couple of reasons. A, by the way, I'm about to discuss the album cover, so you can check it out on my website, logansonsoff.com, um, on the album review page. This is Fontaine's DC Dog Roll. The album cover is incredible. So if you want to view this and see it on picture um, properly, you can look at it on my website. And I don't get where the name Dog Roll came from. Don't know why they went for this album cover. All I know is it's an incredible album. Let me know what you think. And just, yeah, thank you so much, Fontaine's DC, for making such great music.